Hello, and welcome to Tita Talks, The Wellness Corner. My name is Sonia Tita Papalo, and I'm delighted to be co-hosting The Wellness Corner with Dr. Ami Bhatt and Dr. Jennifer Joe. We dedicate The Wellness Corner to empowering and improving the lives of all those who choose the path of self-care. I always wanted to do an uplifting show that includes a panel with brilliant minds from multicultural and diverse backgrounds to discuss relevant, timely wellness and self-care topics within our four pillars of a healthy lifestyle, exercise, nutrition, rest healing, and mindfulness meditation a platform that provides solutions and offers insights into the well-being challenges of today. We must not only raise awareness about the importance and the impact of wellness and self-care, preventive health practices, but also discuss the value of credible, evidence-based self-care solutions. It is about furthering the understanding of a holistic integrated approach to well-being. The Wellness Corner is that show. We are currently experiencing the greatest global transformation of our lifetime. This grand transformation permeates the well-being of every aspect of humankind. Wellness and self-care is at the forefront of this paradigm shift and is a priority we must have for humankind. We agree with the Global Wellness Institute. All of us have the right to support our health, regardless of our socioeconomic and geographic situations. The potential of democratization of well-being, wellness, and self-care is now a reality. Yet, it is up to consumers to be informed. In 2020, the global pandemic created a seismic shift in life as we know it. The definitions of well-being, wellness, and self-care are evolving in the way in which people communicate and rely on traditional health care is experiencing a rebirth. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a catalyst for people to reset their lives with wellness and self-care and embrace our four pillars of a healthy lifestyle. Understanding how living a happier and healthier life is not a luxury, but rather a global imperative. With the right wellness and self-care tools, we can reset our lives and forge a new pathway forward. Today, we begin to discuss the grand transformation, and beyond. How to navigate and understand shock. And in each episode, Ami, Jen, and I will not only discuss how to improve and ameliorate the long-term consequences of the COVID-19 pandemic and variants, including Omicron, but also how to live a happier and healthier life. We look forward to having special guests join the dialogue. We believe the aftermath hasn't even begun as people are still rattled and a complete change in lifestyle is happening. In fact, the Global Wellness Institute's December 2021 report, The Global Wellness Economy, looking beyond COVID, shows us that the COVID-19 experience has sparked some major shifts in how consumers understand, experience, and expect wellness. Furthermore, with self-care and self-preservation and survival, as one of the shifts, and prevention as a lifestyle and public health priority as another. They make it clear that wellness in science must move toward each other together. We are delighted to bring you the Wellness Corner from Boston. We will discuss the importance of science and evidence-based preventative practices as safer lifestyle choices as you begin to form your daily wellness and self-care practices. Why is a holistic, integrated approach to well-being so important? How can we, together, learn more as we look at the healing benefits of wellness and self-care modalities or preventative practices like yoga, meditation, and plant-based diets? In India, Ayurvedic medicine has existed for centuries and meditation has been practiced by Tibetan monks for thousands of years. One needs to think about the importance of balance, harmony, and equilibrium. What does your personalized and holistic plan for well-being look like? We shall provide global reach with local application. I would like to formally introduce Dr. Ami Bhatt 
Dr. Ami Bhatt graduated from Harvard College and the Yale School of Medicine. Dr. Bhatt is the Chief Innovation Officer of the American College of Cardiology. She previously served as the Director of Outpatient and Telecardiology at the Massachusetts General Hospital Heart Center and is an Associate Professor at Harvard Medical School. Dr. Bott is also the incoming president of the American Heart Association of Massachusetts. As a leader in telemedicine prior to COVID and a founding member of the Center for Physician Wellbeing at the Massachusetts General Hospital, well-being is a fundamental cornerstone of her practice, empowering patients as well as high-performing physicians through the intense fatigue and emotional distress of the COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you, Tita. And I would like to formally introduce Dr. Jennifer Joe. Dr. Joe is a Harvard-affiliated Massachusetts General Hospital and Brigham and Women's Hospital Nephrology graduate, a practicing physician in emergency medicine at the VA hospital, and a world-renowned leader in healthcare innovation. She was most recently listed as one of Medica's 2021 top 50 most influential voices in healthcare. Moreover, Dr. Joe has more than 10 years of experience treating PTSD veterans at the Boston VA hospital system, hearing their stories, understanding their trauma, and helping them through some of their most difficult times. Health Tech Magazine recently named Jen one of the 30 healthcare IT influencers to follow in 2021. Together, Dr. Joe and I host MedTech Insights. Thank you, Dr. Bot. Now I would like to take this opportunity to formally introduce Professor Sanya Tita Popolo. Professor Popolo is the co-founder and CEO of Wellness World USA and the host and producer of Tita Talks, the lifestyle and wellness video podcast. She's a wellness expert as well as an award-winning author. Currently, Professor Popolo is teaching advanced topics in communication studies Emotional Intelligence and Wellness, a Global Wellness and Self-Care Communication Studies course at Emerson College here in Boston. In 2010, she published and authored Sonia's Ring, 11 Ways to Heal Your Hearts. Professor Popolo has more than 25 years of experience as a yoga practitioner, is certified by the Buddhist chaplain of Harvard as a Yantra yoga instructor, and over the last 20 years, she has led innovative mindfulness meditation programs. Finally, she received her Master's of Arts from Emerson College and then received her second Master's from Harvard University. Tita, on 9-11-2001, your life was catapulted into turmoil with the eyes of the world on you as your beloved mother perished on American Airlines Flight 11. Can you share more with our audience? Yes. My mom, Sonia Mercedes Morales Popolo, was on the first hijacked plane that hit the Twin Towers on Tuesday, September 11, 2001, American Airlines Flight 11. And she was a mere two seats away from Mohammed Atta, the onboard leader of the terrorist attacks. Uh, her body was never found, but some remains were discovered 11 months after the disaster. From the words of former First Lady of the United States, Secretary of State and U.S. Senator of New York, Hillary Rodham Clinton, in the eulogy of your mom, the shock was simply incomprehensible. You then took a dramatic journey of healing and forgiveness after that shock, really Mm -hmm. learning that wellness and self-care was the only way forward which you so eloquently captured in your world-renowned book, Sonia's Ring, 11 Ways to Heal Your Heart, and in your TEDx talk, Healing Hearts, A Message of Hope and Rebirth. Tita, your traumatic experience and then subsequent journey is incredibly powerful. As the world around us is in the midst of our own 9-11 moment with the COVID pandemic, we have so much to learn from your experiences. It's not clear when the pandemic will end, and I think most of us are still just frozen in shock. When we think about what you went through, and we talk some more about how you've come to where you are today, 
We perhaps take a little bit at the five stages of grief from psychiatrist Elizabeth Kubler-Ross. That's one way that we can start to think about both what happened to you and your process and how the four pillars came about, but also for people now who are going through COVID and how they can start to heal. Tita, you're, you're a very positive person and you have a lot of hope. Um, you know, we, we were taught in medical school that there are five stages of grief. And as we've already talked about, um, their denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and then finally acceptance. And we used to think that it happened one, two, three, four, five, right? And that the end was acceptance. You just go through these phases and you're done. But new evidence suggests that no, the stages of grief can take many forms and these can all happen at the same time or um, in different times and they come back at you. Maybe you have anger throughout uh, or maybe you have denial throughout. Um, Tita, what was it like for you? What emotions were you experiencing that day? The day began bright and sunny, but it changed with that ominous feeling that I had. And the day ended with the towers coming down and my life changed forever. You know, the life that I knew exploded in front of my eyes. When the twin towers collapsed, so did I. My mm. mother was gone forever. And the idea of that was absolute shock, uh, pain, numbness, anger, disbelief. I was disoriented. It was just a raw emotion and I was shaken. I was shaken to my core. I was heartbroken. I was frightened. I was panic stricken. I was horrified, crying endlessly and overwhelming love. Thank God I had that love for my family and all of those emotions all at the same time. <laughs> numbness, aching, physically, I was feeling all of these emotions together. And, you know, the terrorists chose flight American Airlines 11, and they chose flights going to the West, because those planes were loaded with fuel, so that they knew that those flights would have greatest impact. With the theme of COVID, I feel it's been so hard for those who haven't been able to say goodbye to their loved ones, who haven't been able to uh, be in the hospital with them and, and not be exposed to COVID. But you know what that's like when you love someone, you don't care. You want to be there with them. You want to be holding their hand. You want them to know that they're not alone. It's first of all, so moving to just hear you tell the story. I feel like, like I am there with you and, and I'm still so sorry for what what you all went through. And as I look at, you know, friends or colleagues or patients who are going through this now over the past now two years with COVID, it's, um, it's interesting to think about what shock does to us and yeah. what happens, right? And, and the daily optimist, you know, Dr. Joe uh, may joke a little bit that, that you and I, Tita, are, are a little more <laughs> glass half full and, and sometimes... <laughs> Being an ED doctor in COVID, uh, there's a little glasses half empty feeling that that you can't blame anyone for having. Um, but in regular life, there is some protection in being hopeful. But when shock comes, when there is this immediate, sudden loss of something that is important to you, um, how do you recover? And uh, I, I'm really excited to dive into this more as we talk more in future episodes about how do we really come back. I feel like the first thing I hear from you and I feel is sharing how we are feeling, which is not something mm. that comes naturally, perhaps especially in the United States to the American culture. Sharing how we are feeling um, is perhaps the first part is being willing to talk about those feelings. And you really were the first to point out that like 9-11 created these kind of circumstances, COVID has done the same thing over the past few years where we know that something horrible is happening. Yeah. But like in Finding Sonia's Ring, and you were forced to accept that your mom was gone and figure out a pathway forward, 
for many people now in COVID, that is all we can do is find a pathway forward. Whether jobs were suspended, loved ones were lost, the minute that recognition arrives that our lives are about to change, that is a moment of shock and trauma. And people today really need help in figuring out how do they move forward. Um, you know, as a doctor, I always try and look to the research. And as early as 2014, you know, there's clear signs. Hope and optimism serve as a priceless asset in the face of adversity. Um, and we see that in research by multiple individuals. And, and there clearly are lifelong benefits for individuals like you who are hopeful for the future. But in the face of calamity, that benefit of optimism, which is true in daily life, yeah. in those periods of calamity, even optimistic people can have the most difficult time recovering from the trauma and when their hope is really crushed. Um, you have managed to do that. I think now when we look forward, how do we deal with shock? How do we take that and recover from it is something that, that both Dr. Joe and I are so interested in learning from you on our journey. Dr. Bot, you have so many great points. Um, and Tita, thank you for sharing such a powerful um, and moving story. You know, um, as a physician, I don't think we learn this as much as we should, but the concept of shock, stress, anxiety, they have real impact on your physical body. Um, we talk about it all the time, um, but it's amazing what the brain is. The brain is the greatest supercomputer on earth. It's a complex network of 100 billion neurons. Every second, there's 18 to 640 trillion electric pulses zipping through. The brain's amazing. Trauma or shock is not just an emotion that comes and goes. No, it is real. It is a physical imprint on your body. It's jarring our memory storage processes and physically and chemically changing our brain. When we don't think of it as a physical insult, we fail to recognize the great impact it has mm -hmm. on our actual physical body. Um, and it has massive impact. We know that. We know that from the data, we've seen that if we don't recognize the trauma, treat the trauma, find ways to heal the trauma, it can lead to long-term consequences, such as heart attacks, stroke, obesity, diabetes, and even cancer. I uh, am on social media and was really struck when Ariana Grande shared her MRI with the world. That was incredibly brave of her, but she wanted to drive home what PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder can actually do to the physical manifestations of the brain for us to understand the real changes that the brain undergoes with trauma. So if we remember there was the Manchester suicide bombing, she was on stage, it was dramatic, it killed 22 people, it really mm -hmm. affected her. It was really intense. The changes that occur um, that we know of are um, three big changes. Um, so there's the hippocampus. The hippocampus is responsible for emotion and memory. So that shrinks, the hippocampus shrinks. So mm. our ability to remember things when we have trauma, our ability to process emotion, um, it's very difficult. Then the second, there's the amygdala. This is the center for creativity and rumination. That increases in size. Um, so it uh, maybe goes into a little bit of overdrive. It's, um, especially with PTSD, um, it has us experience uh, what we felt over and over again, sometimes in a dramatic, very uncomfortable, um, and not great for our overall functioning way. And finally, there's the prefrontal or, um, sorry, and finally, there's the prefrontal and interior cingulate. Um, this is the center for complex functions like planning and self-development. Mm -hmm. So that decreases. So our ability to plan and self-develop and um, do executive functioning, it kind of shuts down. Um, so I think that highlights the real changes that our body has, 
the brain and processing these emotions and driving our overall function. Um, and there's some early data that every cell in our entire body can um, be impacted by traumatic memories. And it's the sticking point so that our body cells could hold an imprint of past traumatic events. Um, I just want us to think about that. Tita, thank you for, for sharing this. And, and you do it so eloquently, but but um, we see the emotion and, and can't even imagine what you have been through. I think the fact that you have brought us together and you draw this line of connection between the idea that there was such shock and loss then for you and you learned how to recover from that and that in the past two years, that same level of shock of what has happened to our world, to the way we live, uh, is what people are going through now. I think you, like myself and perhaps many others out there, consider ourselves optimists or used to and hopefully still do. But even that daily optimism in the life of something that is earth shattering mm -hmm. is hard to find. And so this is our opportunity to talk together, to find amongst Dr. Joe and yourself, Professor Popolo, and myself and our audience, how can we be resilient in the face of shock? Uh, I am honored to be doing this with you. And I think if, if you wanted to share your philosophy that we have learned from you, this would be a great time to do that. Yes, our philosophy is that true self-care relies on utilizing all four pillars of a healthy lifestyle, and that is exercise, nutrition, rest, healing, and mindfulness meditation. And when these four pillars are in alignment, we can achieve harmony and equilibrium in our lives. And Ami um, and Jen, I would like to share the following excerpt from my book, Sonia's Ring, 11 Ways to Heal Your Heart, because I think that it's more relevant today than when I initially wrote it. I share with you that God was reminding us that even in the worst possible tragedy, though we experience indescribable chaos, pain, and suffering, there is always a witness, something that reminds us that something, call it God, spirit divine intelligence, or call it nothing at all, is right there in the middle of the mess along with us, that we are not alone. And it will not only bring us through it all, but will somehow even miraculously bring good out of it. Please go to www.wellnessworldusa.com. Follow us on Instagram at wellnessworldusa.com. Be sure to stay tuned for our next show where we'll talk about hope, resilience, gratitude, and more wellness and self-care tools and techniques to empower you and to nurture your physical, emotional, spiritual, and mental well-being. Is there anything more that you want to share before we close today? No, I will just say that I think this journey is an important one for all of us to take. And no matter where at you come at self-care from, um, it is a new journey for many. The human race has not emphasized self-care as much as it should have over the past several hundred years. Uh, and I think there are clear signs pointing to the fact that this is something we each need to do for ourselves uh, and really for humankind. So thank you for including me in this journey and I look forward to our future episodes. Uh, I think this is such an important time. We're still going through this together. Um, and with gratitude, I appreciate anyone who is joining us um, and will join us on this path together. Life, life is so precious, embrace it. Life could be better, do not think it. Life is now, enjoy it. Life is what happens while we are making other plans. Life is like a quick blow of a flame from a small match living for life is long and the time all the time we spend here is so limited life is so good and so wonderful thank you god that is by sonia mercedes morales popolo she wrote that on august 5th 2001 thank you